Now, one of the most important things to understand about batteries is how they charge and how they react to partial state of charge in their charging. There are stages of battery. You've heard that phrase. You've heard of multi-stage chargers, three-stage, stage, five-stage. Five uh, you've heard of smart charges, chargers that uh, react to the charging state of the battery. Uh, and so there are stages. And let's talk about those stages because that's part of understanding partial state of charge as well. Uh, there are three basic stages. There are more. Uh, people, there are some who call it, have, uh, think in terms of there being four uh, states of charge, five states of charge, even more. Uh, they break down each of the stage into smaller stages, and that's reasonable. So there are basically three stages. We're going to we're going to, going to keep it at the normal three stages. The first is a bulk stage when the battery is very hungry. Imagine you haven't eaten for oh, three days and you're starving. You're gluttonous, aren't you? Gluttonous. Well, your battery is like that. If it gets down to 50%, it's gluttonous, and it hasn't eaten, and it wants to eat, and boy, it will just it will just take in all this power and oh, give me more. That's called bulk charging, and it will take a lot of, of uh, charge fast then. That's why the controller is so important. Some controllers will give it all the power it asks for. Most will not. A lot of what you buy when you buy a better controller is that ability to push out a lot of charge fast. To control, one battery doesn't want very much under bulk. One battery wants a lot. That falls along a lot along the line of uh, AGM versus wet cell. AGMs will take more. They're hungry. Give me more, more, more uh, when, when they're hungry and, and when they're low at partial state of charge than wet cells. Wet cells don't like that as big a charge, although it, it varies a lot. Some are, are very hungry and some are not hungry at all. It, it really is just hard to broad, generalize. Basically, you want to find out from your battery manufacturer what is the proper voltage in bulk and absorption, and then give it that. So like we said then, uh, the next uh, stage is absorption. The battery is not very hungry anymore. It ate a lot. Boy, it took a lot in under bulk, and now it's just not very hungry. It's kind of, yeah, I'll have some of that. That was good. I'll have, uh, I'll have seconds or thirds or fourths. And I'm not real hungry. I'll have a little bit of that, and I'll have that, and oh, that was really good. I'll have a little bit of that. So it's just not taking nearly as much. And then finally, you have what's called float. That means the battery is essentially at 100%, 98, 97, 98, 99, 100%. And it's just taking tiny little bits in at the time. If you turn something on, when the, uh, if you apply a draw to the battery when it's in float, then it will feed that draw out. Say you draw, turn on something that draws five amps, it will put in that five amps and then just tiny little bit more to keep the battery at 100% full. That's float. So as we've seen, uh, during different stages, batteries will take certain amounts of power at a time. And that relates to how long it takes in each stage. And how long it takes in each stage comes as a surprise to most people. It's, it's a confusing part about batteries that most people don't understand. So let's first look at bulk charging. Bulk charging is from 50% to 80%. That's the generally understood rule of bulk charging. 50%, so a battery is at 50%, you bring it up to 80. Now, uh, the rest of the way up to 100 is absorption. So you have bulk 50 to 80 and absorption 80 to 100. Now a lot of people will break that down even into two. So you'll have the bulk from 80 to 90 and then finally 90 to 100. And that it's a continuum. It's at at 50 percent it's taking a lot of juice. At at 80 percent it's not taking nearly as much juice. It can't. It's almost full. It's not hungry anymore. And at 90 percent, 95 percent, it's not even a little hungry. It's just taking it in very slowly, just like our gluttonous man who starved himself for a week and then had put all this food in front of him. As he gets fuller, he eats slower. 
he maybe savors it and enjoys it a little more. Well, that's what your battery is doing. It's not savoring it. It doesn't have taste buds. But essentially, it's, it's doing that. It's going slowing down because it's not as hungry. Bulk can depends on the battery, depends on the charger. There's so many variables that it's nearly impossible to give a, a hard and fast number. Uh, bulk can last uh, two to four hours. So many variables in there. But, but we'll just choose these numbers. On this battery, it takes two, three, four hours in bulk. Let's narrow it down even a little more. All right, let's just pick a number out of the air. In bulk, it takes, on an average, it takes two hours to get from 50 to 80%. Now, here's what's important. To go from 80 to 90 will probably also take two hours. That's what I want you to see. That's the important point. That it's going to take as long to go from 80 to 90 as it took to get from 50 to 80. And then from 90 to 100 will take as long again. So it might be two hours, two hours, and two hours. Six hours to go from 50% to 100% full charge. And a lot of people miss out on that. And that's why they think if they drive their car around for 20 minutes, their battery is 100% charged. No, it's not. If you're on your starting battery, it was already almost full, so it probably will be at 100% charge after a brief drive. It wasn't very low. If that bat starting battery was at 50%, it would not be full in 20 minutes drive. Uh, just simply will not be. And again, there are so many variables, and it's different for every battery. This is not a number that you can apply to two different batteries. The battery for one, the number for one battery might be two hours. The battery for the next battery might be four hours. I don't know. Uh, there are too many variables. But that idea that it's the same amount of time for bulk and then absorption and then the final little bit, that is a very important idea that you get. That's why people who drive for an hour or two and they think, oh, my battery's got to be charged. They're sadly disappointed when their battery dies early because it never got to 100%. So the important thing is that you understand this, that it's not an even amount of time from 50 to 80. It's about two hours to here, two more hours to here, two more hours to here. So it's much longer period of time than most people realize to get to 100%. And what that means is most of you are not bringing your battery to 100% on a daily basis. That's why it's important to oversize your solar panel array. Uh, and that's why it works so well to both drive your car and charge off your alternator, which does charge fast, and then to finish the charge with solar, which gives you a nice, slow, even charge all through the rest of the day. That's why the two work together so well, solar and charging off your battery, off your alternator. So knowing that about how long it takes to get really up to 100% and that so few of us are really actually doing that very often, uh, it's important that you size your system to get your battery to 100%. The battery bank determines the size of your array. If you're going to get two golf carts at 200 amp hours, 240, 220, 240 amp hours, then I recommend that you get, an, ideally, that you get 400 watts of solar. That way you're very likely to get to 100% on a daily basis. Uh, maybe you won't in, in clouds. But if you have 200 amp hours and 200 watts, on a stormy day you will not get to 100%. And under normal circumstances, you may not get to 100% full. The less often you get to 100% full, the earlier your battery is going to die. So money-wise, you're much better off to get way more solar than you think you need. Get enough battery so that you never go below 50%. So here's my rule of thumb in sizing your system. Buy enough battery so that you never go below 50%. Buy enough solar that even under the worst of conditions, you get to 100% most of the time. Maybe not always, but much of the time you get to 100%. And for most people, the average, whatever the average uh, nomad is, 
that's 400, guy living in a van, that's 400 amp watts and 240 amp hours of battery. That's what I generally recommend for most people. Okay, I hope you got something out of this video and you got some ideas about uh, a foundation of understanding batteries. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you.